Hello everyone, welcome back to part two of uh, Dinosaur Digs Advanced Scenario Dinosaur Island Research Lab. So we're currently on June 1st of year two, which means we used almost half of the time available. Uh, we currently have six exhibits and we've just been donated a pair of Spinosauruses. Uh, so essentially we just need to raise enough money to, and also actually figure out where these dinosaurs are going to go. We just need to raise enough money to actually build the exhibit. And I'm thinking either we build the Spinosaurus over here, which would require flattening this area, or we build them over here, which would require flattening a bit more. Or we could actually build them maybe like over here, which wouldn't require flattening anything at all. But it's a bit out of the way of the main zoo. Um, Spinosaurus obviously requires a lot of coniferous terrain, which isn't really very prominent on this map. Because it's a lot of sand, dirt, salt water, rainforest, and then also bits of brownstone and greystone. So, I think that um, here or here are the best options <laughs> excuse me um, how much because a Spinosaurus exhibit for two adult Spinosauruses uh, has to be 200 squares in area Um, which is actually half the size of like a T-Rex or a Allosaurus exhibit. Uh, if we were to build it over here, for example, um, I could probably get away with using the chain link fence as opposed to the iron bar fence. Just saves a tiny bit of money. Yeah, if we were to build it over here, then it would actually fit there, and then I could build. I'd have to re I'd have to um, flatten some of this terrain, but that would work. Or alternatively, I just build it like over here. Uh, I'm not really sure, but I also need money um, before I actually start building any exhibit. So, guest happiness is currently 84. Obviously, guest happiness is not a requirement. Um, zoo, val zoo rating is 85. Zoo value is actually 315,000, which is quite a lot. So that's nice. Uh, animal happiness 96, mainly because the Spinosauruses are not very happy, but otherwise the animals are um, happy. Which is obviously good. The Plesiosauruses did have a baby, but it's, just, it's still just that, it's still a baby. Ferrerosauruses have yet to breed. Sela feces, both of those are still babies. Stegosaurus baby is still a baby. Um, the Iguanodons have got three adults. But that's fine. The Sabre Cats... Uh, have got three adults and a baby. Um, interestingly, we originally had a male and a female, and they had a baby female. And then they had another baby female. Um, <clears throat> but the exhibit is perfectly big enough and fine, that's fine. Um, so yeah, basically I'm just waiting around to raise some money so I can actually start building this exhibit up. And I still haven't actually decided where I want to build it. It's probably worthwhile actually flattening this terrain anyway because... Um, Yeah, just um, 
Because we are probably going to want to build an exhibit here anyway. How much would it actually cost to sort of flatten a lot of this terrain? In such a way that I can actually build exhibits around here. Which will hide everything temporarily. So that is... That would be five squares. Up to there. And then that would be ten squares. Fuck that, that's not what I wanted. Alright, that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right, I think I'm actually going to do that as well. And then. I could build the Spinosaurus exhibit just here, or alternatively I build it oops, um, here. But I think what I'm actually going to do is build the Spinosaurus exhibit over here, um, and then build the eighth exhibit, whatever that turns out to be, build that over here. And then I'll probably have to do scientist um, restructuring, but that's not a problem. So, if I... I mean, obviously I can make some money by just destroying this brick wall. But if I wanted to build a 20 by 10 exhibit for the Spinosauruses... Um, That's going to be 60 squares in perimeter, which is going to cost me $18,000, which I could actually build right now, but then obviously I couldn't afford any of the terrain modifications. Um, also, if we actually look at June, the month isn't over yet, but we haven't made any money in donations with our 17 benefactors who will probably come in at the end of the month. Um, ignoring construction costs, which I think is basically just me levelling terrain, uh, we've actually made almost eleven thousand uh, dollars, which is very nice indeed. So when the month rolls around, that'll be interesting to see how much. Yeah, so it's now July first, and the money basically stayed the same, <laughs> even though we had to pay for the upkeep and employee wages. Weirdly, the upkeep cost is not consistent, because in April it was 5,105, then in May it was 6,170, and then in July, June it was only 3,500, so I don't know why this upkeep is not consistent. Um, but if we look, we actually made about $16,000, once you factor in the construction cost one-time fee, uh, which is actually quite ridiculous. We made about $4,000 in... Uh, donation profits, which is very nice. If we actually look at donations, the Plesiosaurus is reasonably popular, the Herrerasaurus is the most popular in terms of stars, but then you look at the actual money and the Plesiosaurus is making more money? I don't understand. Um, yeah, I think I've said this before, but dinosaurs aren't as popular as you would expect, or indeed as popular as they probably should be, because you're going to a zoo and you're seeing a Herrerasaurus that nobody has seen for about 200 million years, maybe more, maybe less, I don't know, approximately 200 million years, and it's right in front of you at the zoo in a big cage. How is that not interesting and exciting? This game makes no sense at times. You know, guests are like, oh yeah, I really want to see, uh, you know, an elephant, but a Stegosaurus? That's not as interesting. I mean, no offence to elephants, but surely a Stegosaurus is more interesting. Although I must admit that when I go to a zoo in real life, I do like seeing the elephants. Um, but if I saw a Stegosaurus, I'd be bit more impressed. 
Anyway, uh, that's now 10 squares. And that is 20 squares. So this is going to be the Spinosaurus exhibit. Which I'm going to put the entrance to over here. Um, right, now, this is where it gets a bit confusing. How am I going to build this path when I can't really see what I'm doing because of all the um, giant mountain in the way? I think that's okay. Yeah, it doesn't help either that the electric fence obviously is kind of dazzling and very flashy because it's electric. Um, but I think that does work. One thing I will say is that I think we actually need more scenery in this suit because obviously we've got we've got scenery around the buildings in terms of hedges. And we've got the brick wall, and we've got a bit of scenery over here, but like over here, where the actual exhibits are and everything, yeah, we've got exhibits, but we don't actually have much in the way of scenery, other than just like exhibit signs and maps. The problem is, is I don't really know how to counteract that and do anything about it. I mean, the obvious answer to that would be, well, surely the dinosaurs are interesting enough to make the guests happy, but at the same time, as I just said, a Stegosaurus is less interesting to a Zoo Tycoon guest than, like, you know, a Bengal tiger, for example. The game doesn't make much sense in that regard. Guest happiness is actually 87, though, so it is actually increasing. Which is impressive when you consider that the number of guests is actually just increasing all the time. Very slowly, but it is increasing. Um, yeah, those um, adult plesiosauruses are actually quite big. Although, you can get the Loch Ness Monster in this game. Not this scenario, but you can get the Loch Ness Monster. And the Loch Ness Monster basically looks like a plesiosaurus. But it's about twice the size. And Loch Ness Monster in this game is absolutely huge. Um, the Iguanodons are complaining that they can't find any food, but there is food right there. Also, I'm not sure that Iguanodon would walk like that in real life. Um, it's behaving a bit more like a dog, raising, go, walking on its hind legs and raising its um, front paws. Right. Uh, oh. Uh, that's not good. Uh, we're going to need another maintenance worker. Probably actually need another two, because one of them is going to have to repair the electric fencing on the Spinosaurus exhibit, like... Because we obviously don't want escaped uh, Spinosaurus. Fortunately, the Plesiosauruses didn't take the opportunity to escape. Um, all the fencing is now fine. Guest happiness is now 88. I don't know why it's increasing, but it is, so I'm not going to complain about that. Um, and we'll have this 96, 0 rating 86. Right, let's take these Spinosauruses. It is about to roll around into August. Uh, let's actually not drop them straight away in the exhibit. Let's just put them over here. Well, actually, hold on. Um... We're going to need a dinosaur cave. And we're also going to need a lot of coniferous terrain. I'm just doing this basically so that the Spinosaurus isn't just dropped into an exhibit that's extremely unsuitable for them, and therefore they become super angry and they just you know, destroy everything in their path. So, I'm just sort of guessing the terrain requirements. Um, I'll fine-tune it when I actually plop the animals into the exhibit and, uh, you know, 
is sort of a rough approximation. Um, I mean, these are basically the same, but we'll just use these temporarily. If you look at the preferred foliage of the Spinosaurus, it's the, I think it's the Dawn Redwood tree. Or it might be the Norfolk Island pine tree, but whichever one it is, you have to um, research it. So if I was going for, you know, 100 suitability, then I would have to research the tree, but I think I can probably get away with this, to be honest. This is probably perfectly fine. Um, right, let's put the actual Spinosaurus is inside their exhibit. And that straight away gives 86 suitability, not enough grass, too much coniferous, and not enough foliage. <laughs> but hopefully, because I plot them in an exhibit that is reasonably suitable for them already, they're not just going to become super angry and um, destroy all the foliage. So it would help if the Spinosauruses didn't decide to try and electrocute themselves to death. Um, but uh, yeah, so basically this exhibit is fine, it's just needs a bit more foliage for maximum suitability. So it's already at 95 suitability, that's fine. 97 suitability. Am I actually going to be able to get to 100 suitability without researching the required foliage? Because it's at 99 suitability and it feels like they're going to want a lot more foliage. Yeah, that's 100 suitability. With no research at all. Right, so uh, we're going to need another scientist. He will be assigned to this exhibit. And when we get exhibit number eight, then I'll have to do scientist restructuring. Um, but for now, I guess I've just 89, that's really good. We've got one tired guest, one guest that needs the toilet, and one guest that's thirsty, and coincidentally it's the same guest, but he is near the restaurant. His favourite animal is the Loch Ness Monster, which we can't get in this scenario, and he's also got a dinosaur mug, coffee or tea. Stegosaurus is ill, that's not good. <coughs> right, where's the scientist? Are you assigned to this exhibit? You are. Get in there. You absolute plonker. Okay, now we basically just have to wait around. Um, stop electrocuting yourself. Seriously. It's not difficult. We do actually have a bit of food there, so... Um, even though his hunger is only 30, he should go and eat the food. Eat the food. There you go. See? That wasn't so difficult. Right. Logically, Spinosaurus is attractive to guests, but knowing this game, it's probably about the same attractiveness as, like, a 
you know, Black Leopard or something. Now, obviously, a Black Leopard is, you know, something that I'd want to go and see in a zoo. But a Spinosaurus, ignoring the fact that it's absolutely terrifying and could break and find and kill us all, that would be very interesting to see. Right, um, we got dinosaurs available, I think it was June, or maybe it was May, um, so maybe October 1st we'll get dinosaurs, I thought we might get some in September, but uh, maybe it's going to be May, we we'll actually get some more. I've just got four hungry guests, which is interesting. I'm wondering if maybe we need another restaurant. And then just put it, like, over here, for instance. Or we could even build, like, a Prairie Dog Cafe. That might be interesting. So maybe let's do that. No, I don't want to sell the petting zoo. Right, let's get ourselves a... Prairie Dog Cafe. Probably should actually use the um, Rainforest Restaurant or just the regular restaurant, but um, let's go with the Prairie Dog Cafe anyway. Yeah, those Celo feces are quite um, quite noisy. The Herrerarosauruses are probably quite noisy as well. I feel like the seal of thesis is the thing that's making a lot of noise. Extending moved way too far away. Right, that Pro Dog Cafe is now essentially open for business and hopefully people will actually start to use it. Got his first customer. Excellent. Right. Um, we've only got four maintenance workers. I feel like we're going to need some more. Especially with this Spinosaurus around. Um, saying that, we don't have any damaged fencing at the moment. But at the same time, it's possibly better, safe to be, better to be safe than sorry, but I think I'll leave it for now, but uh, maybe as the zoo expands we might need some more. Okay, seriously. Stop trying to electrocute yourself. At first I thought that... Um, Dinosaurs like this electrocuted themselves because they were trying to attack the guests. But the fact that he was trying to electrocute himself out of this wall, when there's no guests that way, and there's only a mountain, makes me think that they just randomly decide to electrocute themselves. <laughs> and that these dinosaurs are actually secretly completely and utterly stupid. So we now have a zoo value of $351,299, which is actually enough. So really all we need to do is basically just wait for more dinosaurs to appear, and then we can get uh, another three exhibits, and then we just wait for the time period to expire. And yeah, straight away, that needs fixing. With things like the Iguanodon, it doesn't really matter if the fencing is deteriorated, because... Um, these guys don't really... Like, if the Spinosaurus sees an opportunity, it will escape at first opportunity. But the Iguanodon doesn't seem to care that it's in, in, that it's in captivity and doesn't seem to care about escaping. Um, it probably will escape if, you know, presented with the opportunity, but um, it doesn't sort of thing like, oh yeah, I must escape, whereas the Spinosaurus is basically desperate to escape. 
See the thesis fully grown is actually quite big. Although it's just quite hard to see with all the trees in the way. Right, it's coming up for October. I'm hoping that we'll be allowed to adopt some more dinosaurs, or that some dinosaurs will become available. Um, I don't think it's worth spending thousands and thousands of dollars just to get maintenance worker training too, which means that they repair the fences a bit faster. Um, I don't think that's ever going to be worth it, because it is going to cost me, like, you know, many thousands of dollars. And the fact that we've already got that and that makes me think there's actually nothing, there's nothing worth obtaining here. As for conservation, uh, the only thing worth getting maybe would be the nocturnal house and maybe some dinosaur foliage, but I don't think we actually need either of those, really. Um, we've now got 26 zoo benefactors, which is really good, considering we had 12 last time I checked. And as expected, the Prairie Dog Cafe is making big profit. So, not only is it making a big profit, but obviously it's also helping alleviate guests' um, needs. You know, like hunger, thirst, tiredness, I need the toilet, etc. Um, actually, uh, leave that like it is for now, because I'm probably going to build an exhibit and maybe some other building over here anyway. Right, guess how many of this has actually hit 90 for the first time ever? Um, which is really good. Zoo rating is still only 86, but we actually only have 7 exhibits, so that's perfectly fine. Uh, let's get another maintenance worker. Technically, we don't need a maintenance worker every time there's a slightly broken bit of fencing, but I just figure... Um, you know, for $300 a month, these maintenance workers are obviously very important to us because they need to be repairing these fences. Right, October rolled around and we don't have any more dinosaurs, so I'm thinking it's either going to be like December or January when something becomes available. We can get a male Stegosaurus. A male Herrerasaurus and a male Coelophysis and a male Plesiosaurus. Um, they're basically, ex yeah, they're, they're exact same, it's just that we can get a male Stegosaurus but a female Saber Cat, so. We can't adopt any new dinosaurs. Uh, we can get a Yeti, but obviously, you know, um, that's more of a bug. Although, interestingly, that would mean that we could actually build a Yeti exhibit in space in place of a of a Apatosaurus exhibit and still actually beat the scenario because it says exhibit suitability rating of at least 85 for 10 exhibits. It doesn't say exhibit 10 different species, which would actually still mean that we could use the Yeti, and nor does it say 10 dinosaur exhibits or 10 dinosaur species or 10 prehistoric species because things like the Saber Cat and the Plesiosaurus apparently are not dinosaurs. Um, guess what is now 91, actually. Right, this saber cat has actually just grown up and now the exhibit is not big enough. Um, I don't know if saber cats do mate up or if I'm okay to actually get rid of saber cat 2, but the fact that saber cat 3 isn't saying that it wants a mate makes me think I'm probably okay with just getting rid of saber cat 2. And then this should still be fine. Yeah, I think saber cats basically, you can just have one male and then, like, two females, and that's fine. They don't sort of mate up. Why this Plesiosaurus exhibit is breaking so much, I don't understand. I mean, well done to the maintenance worker that just repaired it, but... These Spinosauruses seem intent on electrocuting themselves to death. And I don't know why, but it's very annoying. 
Because the problem is, is that they basically just keep electrocuting themselves and becoming really angry. So hopefully he won't start destroying a load of trees. <coughs> There are three species in this game that are massive, massive pain in the arse. Um, because they specifically require electric fencing to contain, because I think they can basically just break through regular dinosaur fencing. Or alternatively use the pit method. Um, which is probably cheaper and easier in the long run, but the initial cost is probably more expensive because you've got to you know, um, dig out a giant pit. Right, the Spinosaurus is ill, so he's going to be healed by this scientist. Uh, we still don't have any dinosaurs we can adopt or place them in an exhibit. I'm thinking it's probably going to be January that we get some. I can't imagine that we get something in November or December, but you never know. Right, that Spinosaurus has now finally been healed. Um, I guess after this is 89, that's fine. Probably went down a bit because a lot of guests maybe saw the Spinosaurus that was sick and then became a bit unhappy. Um, zoo rating 86, can't really do anything about that. The same guest seems to be very happy with your zoo because it hit 90 for the first time. Well, not for the first time, but if guest happiness is above 90, it will say that guests are very happy with yours, though. Um, but I still want it to be, you know, 95 if possible. But it's not looking like that's going to happen. Uh, which is very annoying. <coughs> Excuse me. So the has just dropped to 85 for some reason. Now it's back up to 86. Um, yeah, I mean, as long as guest happiness, you know, doesn't suddenly drop to, like, say, 80, then we're fine. Because it's not an objective of the scenario. Oh, great. Say so cat 1 is now ill. Uh, right, well, where's Mr. Scientist Man? Are you... right. He has a training that means that he can walk... Which means that he can walk faster, but I swear he still moved really, really slow. Getting between these exhibits. And he's not exactly got far to travel either, he's just got to go from there... to there. And also, with all these broken exhibits, I think I'm going to get another maintenance worker. You yeah, don't just stand there, fix the fence. Right. Deary me. Okay, um... I still can't adopt any new dinosaurs, so it's either going to be December or January. If, it, if I don't get any new dinosaurs by January, I feel like there's something wrong. Because I've got to build three exhibits in essentially less than a year. Which is perfectly doable, but it's only doable if I'm allowed to adopt some new dinosaurs. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to build, like, three more exhibits for, um, like, Herrerasaurus or something. You know, I don't have to build ten different exhibits, I can build exhibits for the same animals. Right, Plesiosaurus needs to be sold off. Say the cats are fine. Iguanodons will be fine. Uh, although when this Iguanodon grows up, then we'll have to sell something off. I think Iguanodons don't mate either, so I can probably just sell off number two and then have one male and two females. Because the fact that this one isn't saying that it wants a mate. So I suppose that's a good thing about dinosaurs, is that uh, they don't seem to mate in pairs. Um, so you can basically just have one male and the rest of them female. I guess I mean, this is just dropped to 88, so... Uh, I don't know. 
Guess having us in this game makes no sense, really. You know, I built a zoo with a load of African savanna animals and not really much diversity, and I had guest happiness of like 97, 98. I build a zoo that's actually quite varied with a load of freaking dinosaurs. Guest happiness 88. Why? I'm actually amazed that this Stego put, whilst a very small profit, is actually making a profit. I mean, $66 a month is basically nothing, but it's a very small profit, and um, if it just raises guest happiness that tiny, tiny bit, then it's worth it. But saying that, guest happiness has just dropped to 87, so make it make sense. Because we have 468 guests, but we don't have any problematic guests. So it's not like we've got hungry, tired, thirsty guests, etc. Um, I do not understand. Just noticed I never actually built fence or hedge fencing around this particular animal house. Someone has just dropped to 86, god knows why. <sighs> yeah, there's really no logic to this at all. I guess I should stop trying to question it, because it doesn't make any sense. Oops. basically do some restructuring of scenery and this brick wall is going to be rebuilt. Hang on. So we want to double up this bit of path here, make that like that. And then, if I make that into uh, asphalt, then I can put in a. Hmm, do I want all the mammoth fountain? Yeah, let's go for a woolly mammoth fountain. There. And... I can't actually see what I'm doing, to be honest. Hide the building. Then, there. Put in a bit of path there. And then surround all this with a bit of brick wall. Put some brick wall down there. And then, flatten this terrain.
And then put in some. Oh, that's too big. That's too big. Just putting a bit more scenery around there. And there you go. And for all that, guest happiness is still 86. Well, fuck you, guests. It's a rating 85. Yeah, I really don't know why guest happiness is such an issue in this particular scenario. Um, as I said, dinosaurs aren't that popular for guests, but... Um, I really thought that dinosaur... Sorry, that the uh, guest happiness would be a bit better than it is. Because it was 90, and now it's just dropped to 86, and I don't know why. <coughs> Excuse me. And if we pick a guest that's been in the zoo for quite a while, like this guy... Yeah, he's happy. Well, 84. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. We are actually getting quite a lot of new guests coming into the zoo. We're getting about 50 guests a month coming into the zoo. Which is good. Because it means money from admissions. 30 benefactors. I'm not sure if the number of benefactors can actually go down. I feel like it probably can. Um, I don't think it's a situation where once a guest decides to become a benefactor, they're a benefactor for life, but I don't know, maybe it is. Right, December's are all around, and we still don't have any dinosaurs that we can adopt, so I'm thinking January 1st, hopefully, I'll be allowed to build the... Well, it'll be the eighth exhibit. Um, I, t I don't understand why the fencing that's breaking the most appears to be the Plesiosaurus exhibit. Ooh. Right, where's the nearest maintenance worker? Uh, that is a good question. There's one over there. There's one over there. I thought there might be like one over here, but obviously not. I know you haven't got any training, but do you maybe want to move a bit quicker? Yeah, that's right. Quickly scan the scene to figure out what the hell's going on before you actually decide to fix the fence. Dearing me. Is that a sign that I need another one? Right, the Rarosaurus exhibit now is slightly broken over here. It's only it's honestly just quicker and easier for me to keep hiring maintenance workers. Um, at this rate, by the time the scenario ends, I'm going to end up with like 30 maintenance workers. I know they're not trained, but they are tadding competent. Yeah, the Spinosauruses are quite noisy. I suppose that's to be expected when you consider that they're A, massive, and B, giant frickin' carnivores. Fortunately, I think the Spinosaurus is the only dinosaur that we get that requires the electric fencing. I think it's the only dinosaur that's going to be like a massive pain in the arse. I don't think the T-Rex or the Allosaurus are actually in this game. And I think you can probably get away with regular fencing for the Apatosaurus. It's just that the Apatosaurus is absolutely enormous and requires 250 squares per animal. Which I'm pretty sure is the largest of any animal in the entire game. Which does make sense when you consider how freaking big an Apatosaurus is. But still, 250 squares is 
huge. Right, finally, January 1st has rolled around and we've been given some dinosaurs. Uh, two Cordipteryx. That's actually really good because um, they only require a very small exhibit and they are actually very popular with guests. Um, and they can just use regular Zoo Tycoon fencing, amazingly. For two Cordipteryx, yeah, they only need 20 per um animal but hopefully they will breed um right so i can put them over here and then i'll have to do scientist restructuring or alternatively i'll just get a fifth scientist that would be the easy thing to do i think i'm going to do that so he's going to be on the sign for a little bit um these called dipteryx is go over here and then I'm actually going to build this as a 10 by 10 exhibit uh, because I'm hoping that these dinosaurs will actually breed uh, but seeing as they they can they don't they can jump but they don't have any strength so they basically can just get away with regular zoo tycoon fencing like so The thing is, is that these things are pretty small in the game, and yet I think in real life they were a lot, lot smaller than they're actually depicted in the game. These things are basically dinosaur equivalent of like ostriches or chickens. Um, they're like prehistoric birds, um, but they are actually very popular with guests, amazingly. Yeah, so basically even though um, <clears throat> even though the fencing is like, you know, just a wooden fence, these things won't actually escape. <coughs> Unless, of course, the fence deteriorates. What I've got to be careful of is that I don't actually accidentally create some kind of island. Uh, thereby creating part of the exhibit that's completely inaccessible for both the animals and the um, staff. Not many trees, it's got to be said. Uh, right, I think these guys want this tree. It's actually cheaper to use that than it is to use the fern bush. Because the fern bush would cost 400 per square and this only costs 200. And there you have it, that is 97 suitability. They do want more animals at the same type, but obviously I can't do anything about that. They're just going to have to breed. Right. Um, you can be assigned to the Cordipteryx temporarily. I say temporarily, I mean, you know, for the time being. Right. Guest happiness is now 84. Animal happiness 95, but I think that's basically just because these Cordipteryxes aren't that happy because they've only just played, they've only just been placed in an exhibit. Do these guys not actually want the shelter? Doesn't seem like it, no, because he's not saying that they want the shelter at all. Um, I'm surprised by only 97 suitability. But there doesn't seem to be anything I can do about that. Oh well. Yeah, I guess happiness is just that, basically. It's just stupid. I really should stop worrying about it because it's not going to hit 95, so I'm not going to get the $25,000 bonus. But I actually don't really need it at this point either because I'm making quite a bit of money. Um. I only really needed it because I was thinking, like, oh, money might be an issue, but the fact that it's not means I can probably get away with not worrying about it and stop worrying about getting 95 
this happens. It ain't gonna happen. I can live with that. Um. Right. So, there aren't any buildings, obviously, worth building that are only uh, two by two. We can put some dinosaur skeletons around, although, as I said earlier, I don't think dinosaur scenery is actually as popular as Zoo Tycoon scenery, and it is actually quite expensive. Um, but saying that, we can build Velociraptor Skeleton and Triceratops Skeleton. Triceratops is a bit of a weird one, because um, you can adopt Triceratops in this game, and I think we will actually be given some Triceratops later on in this scenario. Um, but the way that you get the Triceratops is basically you either cheat and name your exhibit a specific thing, um, or you actually get it as a reward for completing the very last Zoo Tycoon scenario. But at the same time, if you just have Zoo Tycoon installed without dinosaur digs, it's treated as like a Zoo Tycoon animal. If you have dinosaur digs installed, it's actually got different stats, and I think it is actually slightly less attractive to guests. But you can't actually research the Triceratops. So the only way to adopt it, without winning the Zoo Tycoon scenario, as far as I'm aware, is to cheat and name your exhibit a specific thing. So even though I think we do actually get Triceratops in this scenario, it's a bit of a weird one, because it's kind of like a hidden cheat reward animal, and yet for some reason we're allowed to adopt it in this scenario, or not even adopt it, but like I think we can we might just get given it, in the same way we got given the Chlodipteryxes and the um, Spinosaurus. But anyway, that's now eight exhibits that we have. Um, yeah, the zoo's looking a bit bare, and I feel like we need a bit more scenery. Maybe that's why this guest happiness is quite low. I don't know. But I'm kind of hoping that these Chlodipteryxes might be quite attractive to the guests. I mean, they're very happy, so maybe they will be a bit more attractive, but I don't know, it's, it's a weird one. <coughs> and once again, we basically just have to wait until we get some more dinosaurs. I feel like the last set of dinosaurs, um, which is going to be the Apatosaurus, I think that probably comes around June, maybe July, um, which means we'll have about six months to build the exhibit and then wait around for the scenario to end. Um, the Triceratops I'm not sure, but that might appear maybe like April ish. I wish they gave us four Cordipteryx instead of just the two. Because I could have done with two males and two females. Because uh, obviously these guys are saying that they want more animals in the exhibit, and I'm wondering if that might be why the suitability is only 97. If I had four animals in there, maybe the suitability would be higher. Might as well build some scenery around here. Um, hmm. I don't know, actually. I mean, does that look okay? That looks a bit dodgy to me, but then it also looks very bare, just like that. Maybe I could put in some flower beds. Hang on. That does look very questionable, especially when fully zoomed in. Uh, I think just basically because they're all the same. The 
This one doesn't really look any better, to be honest. I think small fossil wall, is that only... Yeah, it's only one square. Um, hang on. What? Does this thing not have a front and a back? That's really quite odd. Okay. Um, I kind of wanted to... I wasn't sure like if this thing actually had a front and a back, but it doesn't seem to. So that's really quite weird. Um, yeah, I guess just put in some scenery. Like I said, dinosaur scenery isn't very popular, but, uh, you know, it might just help a little bit. And then put in something. Here. Like an obelisk actually, that'll that'll work. And then some maps. Here. Uh, here. Right, I thought these Clodipteryx would be more popular than they are. Maybe because there's only two animals in the exhibit. I don't know. I've been a few problematic guests, but there's not really much I can do about that unless I built yet another restaurant. Um, I suppose the advantage of the Prairie Dog Cafe is that if you're a guest and you want some nachos, the only place you can get nachos is at the Prairie Dog Cafe. Because um, we don't have a nacho stand. But if you want pizza, you've got to go to the restaurant. Otherwise, they sell the exact same items. But the restaurant is more expensive. So yeah, we're basically going to have to wait another... Well, a couple of months, and then we should be able to... Either adopt more dinosaurs in the form of... I think the Triceratops. I'm going to look like an idiot if it's not the Triceratops. Um, and then the Apatosaurus maybe becomes available around about June or July but once again we're basically just sat around waiting yeah it's not the most exciting scenario but it's also not a very difficult one either <coughs> it is just a lot of sitting around waiting um, because I do have enough money to build probably Maybe not the Apatosaurus exhibit as well, but I would have enough money to build the Triceratops exhibit. Um, but unfortunately I can't, because the game won't let me. If this one guest would just move slightly out of the way, then I could build a um, flower bed over there. There you go. Right. <laughs> right, so I'm going to save the game. Right, Stegosaurus exhibit is slightly deteriorated. I suppose this maintenance, whoops, maintenance worker does actually have quite far to travel, I suppose, to fix the fence. Um, apparently part of it is still actually in need of repair. Apparently it's just been repaired, so I didn't actually see where it was. Uh, right, in terms of potential overbreeding, 
Yeah, the Iguanodon is going to need to be sold off. Rarasaurus is a fine. Stegosaurus is fine. Coelophesis, when that grows up to adulthood, it's going to need to be sold off. But for now it's fine. And everything else is fine. wall over there. Uh, let's just get another maintenance worker, we can afford them. <laughs> I'm wondering if it's an idea to just completely flatten this mountain. I know it's going to cost me like fifteen to twenty thousand dollars, but it would allow me to build another exhibit over here. Yeah, twenty-three thousand dollars it would cost to completely flatten the ex the mountain, but it does allow me to build uh, over here, and I think that might actually be a good idea. I can probably actually fit the Apatosaurus exhibit in over here. It depends if I get one Apatosaurus or two, but I think I can probably fit it over here. Um, the other alternative is that I build it, like, say, over here, or something, but I think building it over here is probably quite a good idea, because then I can use the, this big long stretch of flat, or flat, straight, um, zoo boundary. So, just out of interest, that is 26 squares wide, so that is actually wide enough. So, yeah, I think build the Apatosaurus when I get it over here and use this giant stretch of straight um, zoo boundary wall, which is obviously invincible and also I don't have to pay for that. So, it cuts down few thousand on um, not having to build exhibit fencing but it is also completely invincible so yeah when you can use the boundary of the zoo as part of your fencing <coughs> it's invincible it never deteriorates and you don't have to pay for it right that sealer thesis has hatched um, it's almost April. Are we going to get any more dinosaurs to adopt or be donated to the zoo in April? Here's hoping. I think this is going to be the first time that I actually build a Triceratops exhibit on video. And also, probably the first time I've built a Triceratops exhibit in a very long time. Because as I say, it's not normally a dinosaur or even an animal that you see. Because normally to get it, you have to cheat. It's a very simple cheat. Um, you know, it's just literally rename an exhibit. But um, right, April's rolled around. April first, uh, April Fool's Day, and I am the April Fool because I've received no new dinosaurs to adopt. That's not good. So, it's possible that when June rolls around and we can get the Apatosaurus, I say June, it might be July, then maybe we also actually get the Triceratops at the same time. Because I can't imagine that it's going to be like, oh, May 1st, you can adopt some dinosaurs, and then, you know, June, you can adopt the Apatosaurus. So I think it's probably just going to be that the last two appear at the same time. Which is fine, it just means that we're going to have some dinosaurs by the entrance for some time awaiting their exhibits to be built. I'm going to save the game. Why the guest happiness reached 90, I don't know. Why the guest happiness then dropped from 90, I don't know. Because in my mind, okay, we've got some dinosaur scenery which isn't that popular. 
But we actually do have a lot of... We actually do have quite a bit of scenery. Um, and we've got a lot of buildings and things for guests to do. And presumably they're not, like, overcrowded. Hopefully guests don't become unhappy if they see um, slightly broken fencing. I don't think that's the case, but um, we do seem to be getting quite a bit of slightly broken fencing. I guess I'm just drop just drop to 84. We've got one angry guest who has not a single thought in his head. This just goes to show that some of the angriest people on the planet are also some of the stupidest. There is not a single thought in this man's head, and yet he is absolutely furious, despite the fact that all his needs are currently reasonably satisfied, he still feels that he must be angry. His favourite animal is the ostrich, which he'll never get to see at this zoo. What an absolute plonker. We also have four hungry guests. Make that five. Um, I don't know whether to build yet another restaurant or not. I suppose it couldn't hurt. But when we already have two restaurants and a prairie dog cafe, I feel like... It's overkill, but at the same time, it would probably make money, so... Eh, maybe. The question is, is where would I build it? Maybe over here, and then, as I start to expand out over this way. It would, it would attract guests over this way. Maybe. That could be worthwhile, actually. So, let's destroy this brick wall. Temporarily, because I'm probably actually going to rebuild a lot of this brick wall later, whoops, later on anyway. I might keep the mountain for now because it is actually kind of like a feature of the zoo. And if I flatten it, then it kind of makes the zoo a bit more sort of generic and ordinary. And that's quite flawed logic, but... Right, I've got a bit of four before over here, so we can put in a turtle fountain. And... Oh, hang on, that's four three. Which is enough for a woolly mammoth fountain. Okay. And then surround this all by... Oops. Uh, hedge fencing. And then... <clears throat> uh, build some path over this way, because I'm not going to build any exhibits over here. Not with this weird wiggledy, higgledy, piggledy... Um, boundary to the zoo. Do have to be careful though, because obviously I am going to build the Apatosaurus exhibit over here. So this is just sort of preliminary. Um, pathing. You know, I might end up destroying quite a bit of this. Right, so... If I build a, another restaurant over here... Oh look, it fits exactly. Almost like I planned it, even though I didn't. Six months left to complete the scenario. No, there aren't, game. No, there aren't. There are eight months left to complete the scenario. I think this is just some kind of weird bug, because I think I say this every scenario. It seems to miscount how many months there are. I'm not 
quite sure what happened there. <coughs> right. Please excuse my coughing. We've got our first customer for the restaurant, which is nice. I mean, if nothing else, it might actually encourage guests to go to the restaurant, which then encourages them to go over here and see the Iguana Dom, which otherwise might not be that popular. They also get to walk through all this um, zoo scenery, which hopefully makes them a bit happier. Um, Is there no, like, 5x5 five five scenery? There's a lot of 4x4, four four, and then there's like 6x6. Six six. Although it's a bit of a weird shape, actually. But yeah, it doesn't seem like there's actually any 5x5 five five scenery. Okay, well... I can always put in a building, but that's a bit risky because it's like, well, what building would I put in? You know, is it worth putting in another gift shop or something? Um, no, let's just put in some scenery. Uh, I think probably I should just go with an elephant fountain here, and then maybe snake pits and then over here uh, ooh, hang on. and then a sphinx and that should work and then surround the whole thing with uh, Low hedge fencing. Sorry if I'm not actually talking that much, I'm just sort of putting in bits of scenery and uh, sort of thinking about what I'm doing. Should be fairly apparent as to what I'm actually doing. Um, I mean, I'm not really giving much thought into like what actual scenery I'm putting in. I'm just putting in things that either look nice or actually fit into these particular spaces. Yeah, something like that. I think that looks okay. Um, and then that leaves quite a nice sort of area for the um, wait, which is bigger? That's four before. Wait. Hold on. The lava pit is a bit of a weird shape, but it is basically 4x4. Four four. The tar pit is more square and it's 4x4 four four as well. They're both quite expensive though. Uh, but we'll build... We'll go with the tar pit over here. And then... We'll go with another... I can't actually put anything there. Well, we'll just go with a large geezer over here. Like I say, dinosaur scenery isn't that popular, but with guests, but, uh, you know, that doesn't mean that we can't build any. 
Yes, the guests are actually coming over this way because the restaurant is over here. Which was basically my plan. And then guests will hopefully come over here to go see the Apatosaurus when I eventually get given it. Which I'm hoping that when June rolls around, we will be given either the chance to adopt Apatosauruses, or they will just be given to us as adults, freshly donated to the zoo. And hopefully also maybe some Triceratops. Right, dinosaurs have been donated to your zoo. Uh, we can't actually adopt any dinosaurs, or any new ones at least. So we've been given... Oh, okay, we've been given an adult male and an adult female Apatosaurus, and an adult male and an adult female Triceratops. So, um, first things first, is this big enough? No. Not for two, anyway. Because this is only... Hang on. Damn it. Well, I made a bit of a mistake here. The alternative is I only exhibit one Apatosaurus. This is 27 by 16. Oh boy, what the hell's 27 by 16? Let me just get my calculator out. Something tells me that 27 by 16 is, well, it's certainly less than 500, which is what I need it to be. <coughs> Excuse me. 432, right, so, I've made a bit of a me I've made a bit of a mistake here. Um, not to worry, I'm just going to build the exhibit a bit of a weird shape and essentially this is going to be um hmm, hang on yeah the exhibit is going to be a bit of a weird shape um right hide everything If I build it like this, that is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, by an extra 1, so that's obviously only an extra 15 squares. Um, if I build it like this, then that is um, 15, 16 squares by, we said, I think that was 27. Uh, huh. 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, that's 27. Right. How have I managed to get this wrong then? <laughs> okay, this is not this isn't ideal. Um I think in my head I was only expecting there to be one Apatosaurus for some reason. I didn't really consider the possibility that there'd be two Apatosaurus. And I also didn't actually I checked the length of this, but I didn't check the length this way. So that's kind of my own fault. Well, it is my own fault. Um, but essentially, 27 by... We said 16? Yeah, 27 by 16 is apparently 432. Meaning I need another 68 squares. So... That would give me another 15. Which would then mean that I need another... 
and then this is uh, 12 by 4 and then it would be one square too small for God's sake that's insane I'm actually just gonna do this essentially and this should be big enough I think this is actually slightly too big but it should be big enough and that's about as sort of rectangular as I can make it right this is the Apatosaurus exhibit yeah they weren't lying in the description when they said that this Apatosaurus exhibit would have to be absolutely enormous consider how big this is as an exhibit compared to say you know, an exhibit with even like two African elephants, which is only a hundred squares. Um, or like this Cordypterix exhibit. This Cordypterix exhibit is a hundred squares. Look how small this is as an exhibit compared to this giant Apatosaurus exhibit. But if I've done my maths correctly, uh, this should be big enough. And just to check, it costs $10 to convert one tile of terrain into asphalt. If this is more than $5,000 to, to fully convert, then that means that the exhibit is more than 500 squares, which means that I've done my job correctly and this exhibit is big enough. And you can see, are you joking? Have I missed a bit? How is that not big enough? What the hell? Have I missed a bit? Or is that just genuinely not big enough? Oh, for God's sake. Right, let's just go with the method of plonking the dinosaurs in the exhibit and seeing if it's big enough. And if it isn't, then I'll have to make the exhibit like a tiny, tiny bit bigger. Yeah, the exhibit is not big enough. Well, fuck sakes. I don't know how... After all that, the exhibit ended up not big enough. No, yes, no. Deary me, what an absolute mess. Right, well the exhibit is now big enough, so let's save the game. Right, well that was an absolute train wreck. Where's the entrance to this exhibit? It's over there, right. Um. I'm going to get another scientist, just for sake of convenience. He is going to be assigned to this exhibit, temporarily. Right, uh, and save the game once again. Right, now. This is going to cost an absolute bloody fortune. I mean, the obvious and easy thing to do would have been to just exhibit one of the Apatosauruses and sell off the other one. Um, that is the obvious and easy thing to do, to be honest. Um, because then I could get away with an exhibit that's only 250 squares big, and I don't think Apatosauruses breed very easily or regularly and it would also save me a hell of a lot of space and money Oops. fortunately they've got fairly predictable terrain requirements right that'll do um 
Do you like this? No, you don't. Okay. So I'm going to have to get away with using lots and lots of small rocks. That's a lot of rocks, but then it is a very big exhibit, I suppose. And I'm also going to need a lot of foliage. Uh, they actually do want the Glossop Terrace tree, which I would have to research. But we're just going to use this. I don't think they actually want that much foliage, amazingly. Even though they are a deciduous animal and the exhibit is enormous. I don't think you actually need that much foliage. And they straight away just decided to destroy some of the foliage. Great. Oh well. That's still in the 83 suitability. Obviously they don't like the rubble. Um. <coughs> right, that is now 85 suitability, which apparently is the bare minimum for them to be happy, but also the bare minimum uh, for the scenario objectives. But we can obviously do a lot better than that. So, these guys can obviously escape by just destroying their fence, because they're so bloody enormous and strong. I think these guys are actually genuinely the strongest animal in the game. Certainly the largest. Apart from maybe, like, bowhead whale or something. But in terms of requiring an exhibit size, I'm fairly confident to say that these require a bigger exhibit than a bowhead whale. Or a sperm whale, or a... Um, you know, anything else in the game. <laughs> so, these guys actually do want more foliage than I was expecting. But then again, it is a very big exhibit, and they are deciduous animals. So, I suppose that's to be expected. Remember when I had more than a hundred thousand dollars? Yeah. Um, I don't anymore. This round I might actually be able to hit a hundred suitability because this is a lot of foliage. Right, that's 100 suitability. So, save the game. We now basically have six months to... What the hell happened to my guest happiness? I guess maybe the... because all the guests have flocked over to see the Apatosauruses and also go to see the restaurant. And maybe at the time, because the Apatosaurus wasn't that happy, a load of guests became unhappy or something? I don't know. But, um, oh well, not really anything I can do about that, unfortunately. Um, hopefully over the remaining six months of, or so of the scenario, the guest happiness will go back up a bit. But, as I say about a million times already, guest happiness is not a requirement of this scenario. So this restaurant is making not a very big profit, but it's making a profit. And if nothing else, it is encouraging guests to come over this way. Um, So 
So all we have to do now is basically just build the Triceratops exhibit, and then we are essentially done after that, I do believe. Right, so guest happiness drops to 80 for some stupid reason. Animal happiness is only 97 because these Triceratopses aren't very happy. The Apatosauruses, though, are actually both very happy. And also, they don't require any kind of shelter. To be honest, the dinosaur cave is probably actually too small for these guys. Um, which is saying something because it is absolutely enormous. So Apatosaurus has decided to take a drink. <coughs> right. So the final thing to do is to build an exhibit for two adult Triceratops. Now, the Triceratops requires an exhibit of... Do -do 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 -do. Uh, 16 by 10. Excuse me. Two Triceratopses. Oops. Bit of broken fencing over there. Come on, Mr. Maintenance Worker, go fix it. Uh, right, where do I want to build the Triceratops 16 by 10 exhibit? Um. If I, let, if I flatten this um, giant mountain, then I could probably actually just build a Triceratops exhibit over here, and it would actually probably make the zoo make more sense, because then you could go and see the Apatosaurus a bit easier, and it would be easier to see the Spinosaurus and the Stegosaurus. And I could put some scenery and some buildings over here. So I think, even though it's like the main feature of the zoo at this point, I'm actually possibly just going to flatten giant dinosaur mountain. Even though it's going to cost me about half of my money. Uh, I don't know. To keep the mountain or to flatten it? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the mountain actually. Um, what I am gonna do though is build the Triceratops exhibit over here near the insect house and the Coelophysis, and then I'm gonna have something like this. I'm gonna need to destroy all this uh, brick wall though. Oh, Sabertooth Cat 1 has died of old age, so in answer to the question how long does a Saber Cat live in this game, it's about two and a half years. Um, that's actually kind of bad because we only have two female Saber Cats and they're both female. Uh, and I can't get a male Saber Cat, so basically these Saber Cats... Uh, we can adopt female saber cats, but we can't adopt any more male saber cats. Um, they're just going to make do with. Oh. Oh no. Oh no 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 no. Oh no. Right. Well, um, I did catch that straight away, so hopefully the zoo rating won't be affected too badly, but then again, ah, yeah, zoo rating has just tanked to 35, um, 
Right, so we do have to be very, 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 very careful that we don't get an escaped Spinosaurus in December. Uh, the zoo rating will climb back up, but um, it needs to be at least 80 by the time that the scenario ends. Right, I think, just to be absolutely safe, we need to build... build? Hire more uh, maintenance workers. Because if the Spinosaurus escapes... again, especially if it escapes like in December, then obviously that could be game over for us. While we're at it... Um, Yeah, we need to sell off that seal of thesis. Uh, yeah, all the animals are actually fine for, you know, um, the exhibit is the right size. So we actually have 16 maintenance workers now, which is a hell of a lot when you consider that we only have um, 10 exhibits. Or technically 9 at the moment, but we will have 10 exhibits. Right, so I was going to build an exhibit, remember? I was going to build the Triceratops exhibit before the Spinosaurus decided to escape. Okay, um, save money, I'm going to use this fencing. No, I'm not. I'm going to use this fencing. Um, so this is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It's like I planned it, even though I didn't. By 10. And then this is not exhibit 11, it's actually the 10th exhibit. It's just I had that cock up with the... Uh, Patasaurus exhibit. Now, obviously, this exhibit is currently inaccessible to anything. Um. <coughs> right, I have absolutely no idea what um, Triceratopses are going to want. They apparently want Grass Tree, which is actually a Zoo Tycoon tree. And obviously, as I said before, these guys are sort of zoo tycoon animals. We've now been given the diverse species thing for having 10 species in the zoo, but obviously that doesn't come with any money, unfortunately. Bollocks, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to just undo the sand, not the entire thing. So the zoo rating has already shot up to 69. It's now 71, actually. So it will climb back up to about 86 once things sort of return to normal. Um, and I'm going to need a bit of fresh water, presumably. And that might actually be it for terrain. Uh, rockage. And then trees. We do actually like this tree, which costs 150, or we use this tree, which costs 125, which is apparently what they prefer. Um, I think that's basically because it's a zoo tycoon animal. been given the Dinosaur Care Blue Ribbon uh, for exhibiting at least 10 dinosaurs in suitable exhibits in your zoo, which is presumably 10 species, not 10 actual dinosaurs. Um, so it's presumably to have 10 exhibits with a suitability rating of 90 or more. 
But that extra $50,000 is going to be very welcome indeed, because whilst I wasn't exactly running low on money, um, it's obviously very nice to have an extra $50,000. And that is suitability of 99. Uh, did I get an extra scientist by any chance? I've got scientist 7, who can be assigned to the Triceratops. I was going to do um, scientist restructuring, because technically I only need five scientists. But I think for sake of convenience, I'm just going to have seven scientists, and then just a lot of scientists are only actually assigned to one exhibit. Right, so zoo rating is 85, guest happiness is 82. Uh, we have 488 guests, 28 benefactors. The zoo value is actually $533,809, which does mean that we've actually won the scenario, essentially, provided that we don't get any disasters like, you know, dinosaurs dying of old age and exhibits becoming empty, or alternatively, a certain Spinosaurus decides to break confinement and escape. Provided nothing silly like that happens, um, we we'll basically just have to wait for about five game months and then we've won the scenario. And then that's it. And hopefully I can win the scenario. I'm not going to pause the scenario anymore. Hopefully I can win the scenario before the two hour mark on this video comes up. Um, which is currently 17 minutes away. Um, something tells me that actually might not happen, so that's kind of annoying for me. I'll have to do a bit of video editing. Right, zoo rating is 86, animal happiness 97. Um, guess happiness 82, but you know what, screw them. Um, I think I might actually build another restaurant over here. That will encourage guests to come over here, but also... It'll make a bit of money, and also, um, <laughs> alleviate some guests' needs, like hunger, etc. Right, so let's build a restaurant over here. And a big load of scenery. I need to build another building, like maybe, you know, another Japanese garden, or maybe like another carousel. Did I ever build an animal thing? I did. Yeah. Um, you know, like another carousel or another dinosaur cinema or something, but I don't know, it doesn't... doesn't seem to be anything that I really desperately need besides just more restaurants. So maybe just build... I could even go for the large volcano. Well, I don't think it's actually that attractive to guests and it is absolutely enormous and it is four and a half thousand dollars. Granted that's a one-time fee because you don't have to pay for any upkeep, but... Uh, I don't know, maybe I'll maybe I'll get it actually, just for a bit of a laugh. Yeah, go on then. Why not? Let's get the large volcano, uh, and then we can also put in woolly mammoth fountain over there, and then oh wow, <laughs> Apatosaurus has actually given birth. Um. Okay, so that's the volcano has just erupted. Uh, right. <clears throat> 
Excuse me. There you go. So guests are flocking over here to go to see the restaurant, but also hopefully also to go see the Triceratops. Oh, for fuck's sakes! These maintenance workers are not doing their jobs. I'm actually going to replace all this with the... Um, stronger fence because I'm wondering if maybe the electric chain fence is just not good enough for these Spinosauruses. <sighs> right. Oh god, is the guest happiness going to drop now? We've got some screaming guests, but the dinosaurs are actually contained. Um, so ignore the screaming guests. Guest token has actually increased to 84. Uh, I feel like it was about 83 before the dinosaurs escaped. So ignore the screaming guests and uh, everything's fine. In theory. Yeah, basically the only dinosaur that we really have to worry about escaping is the Spinosaurus. Maybe the Apatosaurus. I'm going to have to flatten some of this around. Some of this mountain up. Um, basically just so I can actually sort of see what I'm doing and also build a bit of path around here. Make the zoo a bit more navigable for guests. And I say that, and I still can't really see what I'm doing because of the giant mountain. Um, hang on. What is actually going on around here? I can't really tell. Yeah, I do actually have a tiny bit of stuff around here. Um, problem is, I can't tell what's path and what isn't now. So that's path, that's path. That's only one square wide, which is not path. So I can put in um, some small fossil walls like that. Um, and then put in brick wall. Yeah, I genuinely can't really see what I'm doing. I put in a brick wall there, but then it's like, uh, where <laughs> <All the f> <laughs> this mountain is so impractical, but I'm so determined to keep it for stupid reasons. I was blocking the path, so I'll just put in a obelisk instead. Yeah, I genuinely have no idea what's really going on around here, because I can't really see. I can't get a good camera angle to know what's really going on around here. Um, right, 
Right, so the Apatosaurus baby hatched. Uh, when he grows up, he'll need to... Or when she grows up, will need to be sold off. Um, because obviously the exhibit is not big enough for three Apatosauruses. That's just insane. Feels like I should be able to put a bit of scenery there because I can put a bit of path down, but right, zoo rating is back up to 84. Um it should probably actually increase a bit more still. Yeah, there you go, it's 86. It might even go to 87. With a bit of luck. Right. Uh, we've still got another two and a half months to go, but there's only eight minutes of video left, so hopefully uh, I can do this before the two hour mark is up. Um, hmm. Right, just make a few final finishing touches to the zoo, etc. Um. The zoo is actually quite large and quite spaced out considering we only have 10 exhibits, but obviously some of these exhibits are very, 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 very large. Oops. workers simply to repair the fencing that gets broken. Unfortunately you can't assign maintenance workers to specific exhibits uh, but they basically just you know their, their only job is to literally wander the zoo and then repair fencing as soon as it gets broken. Unfortunately for them obviously the zoo is quite large and it's a bit difficult to get around so I'm going to put a bit of path light around here. That might help a bit. I could even put another restaurant down over here, which would encourage guests to actually come over here, but is that strictly necessary? I'm paranoid that this Spinosaurus is going to escape yet again. Uh, I don't think anything else really has to be worried about. Maybe the Apatosaurus, but these things are so big and slow that it's probably not a massive concern. Um, if I built another restaurant over here, it's kind of out of the way. area here, but not really anything to do with it. Because um, I don't feel like there's anything, you know, it's not really worth building like a restaurant or a, you know, like a bit of scenery or anything. Just realized actually I kind of don't really want guests to go over here, so I might actually just destroy this area. Um, yeah, I thought that like it might make make it might make 
it easier for maintenance workers to get over here, but in actuality, I think it's probably a bit of a mistake. Um, because I don't really want guests to be wandering around in the middle of nowhere with like nothing for them to see. Oops. Right. Four minutes left on the video, two months left to go. It's not looking like I'm going to be able to finish the scenario before the two hours is up. <coughs> In the event that the scenario doesn't actually complete, um, I'll probably just get to like 1 hour 59 and then just say like, you know, do my outro and you won't see the congratulations you have won, but, you know, the scenario is basically won anyway, so provided we don't get any escaped dinosaurs, it should be fine. It's looking like we'll probably get to about December and then the video will cut off. So unless anything drastic happens in the end months of the scenario, then, you know, we have basically won. That terrain now looks really weird now that I've sort of um, got rid of the salt water and replaced it with asphalt and then destroyed all the paths and everything. Um, Yeah, so <clears throat> I'll just sort of give my overall opinion and thought on this scenario. Um, it's not difficult, but it's very boring, honestly. Um, it's a lot of waiting around for something to happen. Uh, I thought money would be more of an issue than it's actually proven to be. Um, that Apatosaurus appears to be sleeping and sliding at the same time. I'm not really sure what's going on there. If that's a bug or not, I don't know. Um, now it appears to be sliding and moving without actually moving its legs. So, Genuinely no real, no real idea as to what's going on. But yeah, um, it's quite an easy scenario. <laughs> Although... It's kind of a nice concept, the idea that it's like you're sort of waiting for dinosaurs to be researched, but the way that it actually plays out, it's just so much waiting around. Because you're just constantly waiting to be allowed to either adopt dinosaurs or be given dinosaurs. The fact that you can't adopt dinosaurs freely means that if, like, say for example, my saber cat died, my only male saber cat died, that means that I can only adopt female saber cats. Now obviously they're not at risk of getting extinct, but it does mean that I can't get any more baby saber cats. It's quite a flawed idea. Um, why the guest happiness is so low I have no idea. Um, but I'm not bothered about that. Um, currently have 27 zoo benefactors. So that actually has gone down. So that does answer the question that I asked earlier of uh, is, a, is a guest a zoo benefactor for life or not? And the answer is no, they're not. So the number of benefactors in the zoo can actually go down. Um, Right, the um, video did actually hit the two-hour mark, I didn't realise, so this last part is just going to be like sort of, you know, five or ten minutes. Hopefully I'll be able to sort of merge it all together and then it'll just be uh, two video parts. <coughs> because making a part three that's like ten minutes long is a bit daft. But I guess it does mean that you get to see the entire um, scenario to completion, even though... Not really anything's going to happen. 
unless a uh, certain dinosaur decides to escape confinement yet again. Um, I thought the zoom value of 350,000 might be quite difficult. I thought that might be quite a high goal to reach, but the fact that we've actually made um, 50,000 plus 5,000 plus 15,000 yeah, we've actually been given $70,000 in award money. Um, we've actually reached the zoo value of 536000 which is, you know, almost 200000 more than we actually need. I guess I've noticed 82, but honestly, I have no idea why. Uh, that restaurant is understandably making good money. Uh, the Prairie Dog Cafe is making good money. There's only one month left in the scenario. Yep, I am aware of that. I'm just sitting around waiting for the scenario to end. So yeah, as I was saying before, <coughs> you get a good variety of dinosaurs. Um, I'm using the term dinosaurs to mean animals featured in dinosaur digs. Because technically the Saber Cat is not a dinosaur. I'm aware of that. You know, but at the same time, it's a lot of stuff we've sort of seen before. You know, we've seen the Sabre Cat in the Ice Age Zoo. We've seen Plesiosaurus in the Jurassic Zoo. We've seen Iguanodon. Possibly before. Uh, might have seen it in, like, Valley of the Dinosaurs or something. Um, Herrerasaurus, we've probably seen before. Stegosaurus is a Jurassic Zoo animal. See the thesis, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe Valley of the Dinosaurs. I don't remember what dinosaurs I used in that scenario when I did it on recorded video. Because uh, that video is like six or seven years old. Uh, no. Five or six years old. Uh, Spinosaurus we've seen before in the Carnivore Zoo. Um, Cordipteryx I've probably used in the Valley of the Dinosaurs Zoo and... Um, Jurassic Zoo. Apatosaurus we've seen in the Jurassic Zoo. Triceratops is new, we've never seen that before. Um, so, yeah. <coughs> I think the problem is, is that with dinosaur digs, if you include all the animals featured in it, um, I think there's actually only like 26 different species in Dinosaur Digs. Whereas like Zoo Tycoon, there's, you know, an obscene number, like 60 or so species, and the Marine Mania, I'm not sure. but. Yeah, Dinosaur Digs is a weird one, because there aren't actually that many scenarios for Dinosaur Digs. Um, you know, this is the only advanced scenario in the game. I think there's only actually about seven scenarios in the entire game for Dinosaur Digs. Whereas Zoo Tycoon was about... 25 or so. And then Marine Mania... Maybe about... No, that's not right, is it? Oh, I don't know. But I think... I I think Dinosaur Digs does have not actually that many scenarios. Um, I think it's only about 7 or 8, and then about 25 or 26 different species, so you do tend to get a lot of the same sort of animals. I guess this is now 81, god knows why. Animal Habitat is 98, uh, Zoo Rating 86. We've got two weeks ish left to go. Yeah. And. Um, yeah, all the exhibits are big enough and fine. So, 
yeah, we've ended up with 21 maintenance workers, which is probably a lot more than we actually need, but at the same time we did end up with the Spinosaurus escaping twice, uh, which is quite ridiculous when you consider that the exhibit was only actually built in, well, 13th July year 2, so the Spinosaurus had about 18 months with which to escape, and it managed to do that twice. I think for future reference, use the pit method, because then you can use any um, any fencing. You could even use, like, you know, Zoo Tycoon fencing and just get away with, like, the low... Is it a low chain link fencing? I think it's the cheapest. $45 each. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So it seems pretty ridiculous to think that you could keep two Spinosauruses in an exhibit surrounded by low chain link fencing, but it is actually the way that this game works. That an animal basically, or certainly a dinosaur, cannot escape confinement if the exhibit is um, two notches deep. You basically just build the entire exhibit like in a giant pit, hence it's called the pit method. Um, and Therefore, you never have to worry about the dinosaur escaping. It can still destroy the trees, but if it remains suitably happy, which it probably will because it doesn't want to worry about electrocuting itself, um, then essentially, yeah, the uh, the animal will never have to. The, the, you never have to worry about the uh, dinosaurs escaping or anything like that. But it's more expensive to build the exhibit that way because. Whilst you save money on fencing, you have to level terrain by, you know, lowering it the two notches. Guest happiness has dropped to 80. I have no idea why. Um, animal happiness is 98. That's fine. Zoo rating 86. That's great. Zoo value is almost 550,000. And there you go. Uh, congratulations, you have won. Select yes to continue playing this game. So yeah, we're going to just temporarily pause the game. It's January 1st, year 4, and we've won. Yeah, not a difficult scenario, really. Um, it's just a hell of a lot of waiting around for dinosaurs to become available to adopt or be placed in their relevant exhibits. Money, not really an issue either, because if you actually look at the finances, um, for December, we made $9,809. Um, for some reason we only had 34 guests coming to the zoo, um, but we did make, we made less money on recycling benefit than we did in November. I think in November maybe I sold off some baby animals. Um, we're paying a lot in employee wages because of all the scientists and maintenance workers. Zoo upkeep cost is quite high, but the point is, is that we're making about $10,000 a month in this um, scenario, so money isn't really an issue, um, and you can probably make even more money by making more sensible decisions than that. Considering dinosaur zoos are generally not that profitable, because, you know, scientists are expensive, uh, they're a thousand dollars to have per month, um, guest happiness isn't that high, so we've not actually had that many Benefactors, although we now have 39. Um, yeah, not really a very difficult scenario. I'm going to go to the main menu. And it will say... Yeah, there you go. Uh, do, 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 do. Dinosaur Island Research Lab completed. Congratulations! All of the world now flocks to Argentina's Dinosaur Zoo, and Argentina has you to thank for it. So even though all of the world now flocks to the zoo, the guests still only gave me an a guest happiness peak of about 90 and it averaged at about 80 by the time the scenario ended. Make of that what you will, I have no idea. Guests don't make any sense in this game. You know. But hey ho. Uh, yeah, the scenario is one. You can see in the scenario uh, list here that the next video scenario will be the first of the Advanced Marine Mania 
scenarios, of which there are two, and it's called Marine Conservation. We are actually nearing the end, unfortunately, because we only actually have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more scenarios to go. Uh, some of which are very long and some of which are very short, some of which are very easy and some of which are more difficult. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for watching, leave a like, share, comment, subscribe, hopefully I'll be able to merge this part with the other part and therefore it will just appear like it's part two is just slightly over two hours by about. 12 minutes. But yeah, um, take care folks, have a nice day, I'll see you in the next video, bye bye.